This is the third part of a three-part series on X-ray circuit. This video is looking at the filament circuit, also known as the X-ray tube circuit. The entire X-ray circuit looks like this. But today, we'll talk about this area here. This area of the X-ray circuit is the filament circuit, or X-ray tube circuit. There are two main components to the filament circuit the MA selector and the focal spot selector. The first thing we'll discuss is the MA selector. The MA selector is controlled by a device called a rheostat. A rheostat is a variable resistor that allows you to control current via your control console. Current is measured in amperes. So this device allows you to control the MA or milliampers of your technique. Increasing the current will cause the filament within the x-ray tube to get hotter, which boils more electrons off the filament, thus having an end result of a higher MA. A step-down transformer is used in the filament circuit to increase the current by decreasing the voltage. Remember that as voltage decreases across a step-down transformer, current increases. Most x-ray tubes have two filaments. They're represented on the control console by the large focal spot and small focal spot selections. And that's the x-ray circuit. Putting what we've learned from the past three videos all together, we will see the basic operation of our circuit. First, at the control console, you'll select the KVP, MA, exposure time, and focal spot size. The KVP you selected adjusts the auto transformer. Then the step up transformer will increase the voltage from volts to kilovolts. Then the rectifier will change that current from AC to DC and creates a large negative voltage on the cathode and large positive voltage on the anode. Next, the NMA you selected adjusts the rheostat and sends a current to either the large or small focal spot, whichever you chose on the control console. Finally, the current travels through the step-down transformer and into one of the filaments on the cathode. When you fully depress the exposure switch, the exposure timer will kick on and complete the circuit, allowing the voltage to be sent from the negative cathode to the positive anode. The bombardment of electrons from the filament to the anode surface produces radiation. That's freaking amazing. That's some Bill Nye level of understanding how we generate radiation. Finally, let's discuss generators and voltage ripple. In the second video of this series, we talked about half wave and full wave rectification. This graph represents full wave rectification. When we invert the negative half of the cycle, we see that voltage fluctuates from zero to maximum. This cycle from zero to maximum is called ripple. In the case of a single phase, full wave power, we are at 100% ripple. This is not desirable because x-rays vary in energy from the KVP we selected on the control console. However, we can use a different kind of generator to decrease the amount of ripple. The first solution is to use three AC waveforms. The three AC waveforms looks like this and is called a three-phase unrectified generator. This type of generator produces much less ripple. Notice now that the voltage never reaches zero, so less low-level radiation is produced but we can push this even further. What would happen if we took that three-phase unrectified generator and rectified it? So let's invert the negative cycle. Bam, now we have a three-phase rectified generator that brings this ripple to about 14%. I know you thought 14% is good, but we can do even better. We can use a high frequency generator. A high frequency generator can reduce ripple to around 1%. This is, 
This is the most efficient type of generator possible.